Hey, hey, welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, my name is Sarah Sperber. I am a realtor in the Northern Nevada market. And on today's video, as I do every single month, I'm gonna give you my monthly market update and data deep dive. I really like saying that. <laughs> And I'm going to look at the month in arrears. As you know, if you've been following me, our market publishes the data from each month at the end of the month. I go through it, I dissect it, I tell you what I think. And then of course I give you my predictions and my insight for both buyers and sellers at the end. So make sure you guys watch through this whole thing. This set of data is particularly interesting. We are having the wildest few months in real estate that I've seen in a while. We've got so many things to talk about, mortgage rates, the election, our specific market, and all the things that I'm seeing on the ground here. So don't go anywhere because I have so much information to share with you. All right, let's start with the data and just get through all of that so that I can tell you exactly my analysis of what is going on here. So the first KPI that I always talk about is the median sales price. So month over month from the closeout of August to the closeout of September, the median sales price decreased by 3.7% landing at $587,500. We were like hovering around that $600,000 mark for a while. These are lagging metrics. So what we are seeing is we had a very unusually slow summer this summer, and now the market is actually starting to pick back up. We are seeing that interest rates are coming down slightly. I think what's actually happening is the Fed announced that huge rate cut. Rates have actually been kind of turbulent since that happened. They did come down, but then there were days when they slightly went back up. I think we're gonna kind of see a little bit of a bumpy ride. And so if you are on the buy side only, or if you are on, you know, a contingent sale where you have to sell and buy, the buy side of this is gonna feel pretty good to you right now. So it's good news for buyers, but I'm gonna dive into that a little bit later on. So stay with me because there's a lot to unpack there. Let's move on to the next KPI. So this is actually super interesting and maybe contradicts what I just said slightly because I was saying that with more competition, prices would be driven up. But this next KPI says that number of closed sales actually did increase by nearly 4%. So 3.9% increase landing at 401 closed sales for the closeout of September. The inventory that is on the market is getting absorbed faster than it was the previous month. Let's keep going. Median days to contract. Now, this is a big one, you guys. This one increased by 19.2%, landing at 31 days. So that's median. That's also probably linked more closely to the median sales price in our market. So what I mean by that is luxury homes, for example, in our market, that's about 800,000 and above. Those are gonna take longer to sell. That's just a fact, right? Like it's a niche buyer, less people can afford those numbers. So we're gonna have less buyers in the pool, therefore it's gonna take longer. A lot of times we do see those go-to cash buyers. So that takes its own kind of timeline to attract. But in general, our median number of days to contract is 31 days. If you don't understand this metric, that's telling you that from the time a property is listed to the time when they accept an offer, that's that timeline. So we're talking 31 days. So just over a month, this is big news, really. I remember back during the COVID frenzy, I always call it, this was like the 2021, early 2022 timeline. We were seeing properties sit for a matter of hours. So to have just over a month to expect to get your home sold, that's that's significant and it's only been a few years. So that's a big change and it's important to know if you are thinking about selling your home that you may have a little bit longer of a wait than what we've been used to and grown accustomed to the past few years. If you are a buyer, that might mean that you have a little bit more time to, you know, sit and ponder and sleep on it and make decisions. It kind of loosens up the buyer side a little bit to not have to like pounce on the first house that they kind of like, which is what we were seeing during the COVID times. All right, coming up next is percent of list price received. So what a home is listed for versus what it sells for. We're talking about that number. That landed at 98.6%, which is only a half of a percent decrease, but it's a decrease nonetheless. I think that that number consistently 
stays pretty close month over month and I've always said that but to see it go down even slightly with all these other numbers is kind of showing that we may be kind of on the brink of a buyer's market but I think that it is in my opinion going to be temporary just because of the rates coming down. Okay, here's another interesting curveball to throw your way. The median sold, so the sold number, not what it was listed for, but what it sold for, the median price per square foot actually increased and that landed at $328. That might surprise some of you because over 300 just, I don't know, it just feels expensive. I think there's this misconception out there that Reno's so cheap, but like not anymore. <laughs> $328 per square foot as a median. That's expensive compared to a lot of other cities. But anyway, I digress. That's only a 1.9% increase. And again, we're talking about the median. We're not talking about the average. So with that, you know, less than 2% increase. I think that just could be, you know, the houses that actually sold. Let's talk about number of new listings. I love talking about inventory because it's super interesting. Anyway, number of new listings decreased by 4.1%, landing at only 490 new listings in our entire Reno Sparks market. Of course, I am targeting only Reno and Sparks for this data. You guys, if you wanna see all of Washoe County or if you wanna see Carson or any of the, the you know cities, towns, areas in our market, I would happy, happily provide that to you. So just reach out and I'll send it your way. We can talk further about it, but I'm gonna keep going. Active inventory overall. So this is another KPI. We're talking about active inventory. It decreased by only 1.3%. That's not super significant. It landed at 984 listings. So we have 984 active listings at the closeout of September in our market. Months supply of inventory. This is how many months it would take for all of the active listings to be sold basically. So that is coming in at 2.5 months. If no new inventory came to market, every house in our market would take two and a half months to sell. This is a 5% decrease from the previous month. I think that we are kind of seeing a squeeze on inventory, I think. And here we are getting into the analysis of all the stuff. But what I'm seeing in general on the ground, and it does kind of correlate to these numbers, is that there's a lot of uncertainty in the air. I predict that come November, this is gonna kind of teeter in one direction or another. Right now, it kind of does feel like, based on these numbers and based on what I'm seeing on the ground, that we are kind of shifting ever so slightly into a buyer's market at the moment. But I do think as rates come down, we are going to see more competition, especially now that we're seeing the media just hammer it into everybody's heads with headlines that rates are getting slashed and you don't have to pay your realtor anymore. Oh my gosh, don't even get me started on NAR. I've already <laughs> gone down that rabbit hole on here, but if you have questions about that, just let me know. Once all these headlines kind of permeate the brains of the people, I do think we're going to see a lot more buyers enter the market. A lot of homeowners in our market got locked in when rates were super low. And so they've had a really hard time letting go of their monthly payment, right? Because it's been affordable. A lot of people feel trapped in a home that no longer fits their needs. I'm one of these people. <laughs> so I think as we see rates soften, we're gonna kind of remove that vapor lock of people who were holding on to inventory, like their starter homes. A lot of first time home buyers got in when they could afford the 2% interest rates in 2021. And a lot of them were unable to follow the normal progression of home ownership, which is basically, you know, five or so years later, you typically upgrade and let go of that starter home. So we've had this whole time where a lot of the entry level homes have been kind of consumed by people. That's caused a lot of new construction to go up. And there's been kind of this like gridlock with the housing market. But I predict as rates soften, those people who are holding those cards, I call them trading cards, right? Houses are trading cards. As people are holding on to those, they're going to actually be able to let them go. They're going to be able to upgrade. We're going to have more first time buyers, new families buying those starter homes. And hopefully we're going to get back to more of a balanced market. We're going to get back to a higher turnover rate because the last two and a half years or so has been a very, very low turnover rate, not only in our market, but nationwide. So that's kind of the brass tacks of my analysis on what's happening in the market. 
If you have any questions or if you are thinking about making a move in real estate, I'd love to be of service to you or answer any of your questions. You can book a free call with me in the description box below. There's a link to do that. It's no obligation, no pressure. That is not my style, but I would love to hop on with you and just see if we're a good fit. At least get your questions answered and help you devise a strategy for your next and best steps. And if you haven't already, please smash that like and that subscribe button. I put out new videos every single week about the Northern Nevada lifestyle, the Reno Sparks housing market, and of course, all things to do with buying and selling real estate. <laughs> Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you guys next week.